The topic is brain, uh, the brain-friendly workplace. Why talented people quit and how to get them to stay. So we invite uh, Frederike Fabritrius to join us. Fr uh, Frederike, could you hear me? Yes. Hi. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can. The floor is yours. Take it away. I live in a household of little diplomats. I have five kids, age four to nine, and here is how they love to resolve conflict. Yes, they love to stick out their tongues. Can you please all do it? Can you please try it? Can you embrace your inner little diplomat? Just for a moment, nobody's going to see you in this virtual world. Now that you've all mastered this, can we try something a little bit more difficult? Can you please all roll your tongues like this? Yay, thank you, thank you so much. Why did I ask you to roll your tongues? It seems like a fair challenge, the same for everyone. In reality, it's deeply unfair. Four out of 10 people are unable to roll their tongues. And I think this is similar to the workplace culture we are facing today. We're asking everyone to fit into a certain way of working, when in reality, we are all different. Not just our tongues are different, our brains are different. I'm a neuroscientist. I work with Fortune 500 companies across the globe on how to work smarter, better, and happier using neuroscience. I'm here today to tell you why talented people quit and how we can get them to stay. I believe that the future of work is brain friendly. We need to expand our understanding of what diversity means to also include neurosignature diversity. What is neurosignature diversity? Stay tuned. When I worked in consulting, they loved to evaluate me. They were always going on like this. Oh, Frederica, great. The client, the client loves you. So really amazing. They rave about you. Wow, good job on that one. And wow, you speak six languages? Are you really fluent? Wow, impressive. Keep it up. And then they would go, what is this? What's going on over here? Are these your Excel skills? Are they really that poor? How did I spend the remaining two and a half years at that company? I did Excel for beginners, Excel for the advanced, and Excel for the hopeless. I was stuck in the basement, crunching numbers from morning to evening, while my colleagues were out and about entertaining the client and traveling to different countries. I felt like Cinderella with a laptop. I was sweeping the floor while they were dancing at the ball. How did I get out of that predicament? Very simple, I quit and I'm not the only one. We have a mass resignation on our way with 40 million quitters since 2020, according to Business Insider, and they aren't stopping yet. Did you know that two out of three people would like to leave their current jobs? I'm here today to tell you how to get them to stay. And what we need is neurosignature diversity. So let's get started on that. Here we have performance. Up here it's high, down here it's low. And here we have stress levels. So here you're in close to a coma sleep and up here you're close to a panic attack. What happens in your brain when you're really, really bored? You're sitting in a meeting, two hours have passed and people are still introducing themselves. I studied at Harvard. I did my MBA at Stanford. I love kittens, I love puppies. While they go on and on, all you can think is, this could have been an email. What happens in your brain when you're truly stressed out? 
You're about to give your biggest presentation ever. And just when you're about to start, your computer starts an update. We can't think straight when we're either bored or stressed. This is not what your brain needs in order to reach peak performance. You want to be up here. You want to reach peak performance. Scientists even call this state flow. And when you're in flow, you lose the concept of time. You're fully present here and now, and you love what you do. It's not just the joyful state, it's a productive state. You can be up to five times more productive if you know how to get there whenever you want it, whenever you need it. You could just work Mondays and take the rest of the week off. That's how powerful this is. Surfers become one with the wave. Climbers become one with the mountain. And my tax advisor, Ludger, becomes one with his Excel sheet. So what can we do in order to get into peak performance? Well, first of all, make sure to not get into boredom because that's really the surest way to shut down your brain and to not be overly stressed because then your prefrontal cortex for rational thinking shuts down as well. You want to be up here in the zone. And how do you get there? You need to be slightly over challenged. This happens when the task is a little bit too big for you, just a tiny little bit. It sounds simple, but in reality, it's much more tricky than that. So here again, we have performance. And here we have stress. Some people are over here. They love stress. They love challenge. They love competition. I have a friend after a long week of hustling and traveling and meeting, when people like you and I lay on the couch enjoying Netflix, she's out and about running the marathon or doing base jumping, she can never get enough. And that's why scientists call these people sensation seekers or even dopamine junkies. And which professions can we find them? Investment bankers, entrepreneurs, or even leadership experts um, who live very fast paced lives. But what about the people over here? Some people require less stress to reach their peak performance. And when I ask people where we can find them, they always tell me, ah, bureaucrats, boring admin people, basically very boring people who lead boring lives and have even more boring jobs. And I say, this couldn't be farther from the truth. Here you have Pulitzer Prize-winning authors who write a book until it's perfect. The people over here, the sensation seekers, they would love to have their name on the book. They go on vacation, take the laptop, words start flowing off the first page. They look outside the window. Ooh, what's going on? Somebody's doing stand-up paddling out there. They run for the door to never return. Well, the people over here, the deep thinkers, they get it done. Here we have Nobel Prize winning scientists who focus on one tiny molecule for 20 years and find the cure for cancer. If you were to have heart surgery tomorrow, would you choose the surgeon who loves to try out something new and who's a tiny little bit bored? Or would you take somebody who's very risk averse, cautious, and truly cares about you as a person? I know what I would take. If you were to hire a lawyer, would you feel comfortable when your lawyer tells you, ah, all that boring paperwork? I didn't read all that. Tomorrow in court, let's just wing it. <laughs> when I hire a lawyer, I want somebody who knows all the paragraphs by heart and who finds the footnote on page 365 fascinating. In the business world, we need both. People have what I call different neurosignatures. What is your neurosignature? It's your unique cocktail of neurochemicals and hormones that shape your personality 
And depending on your unique cocktail, you're either to the left, to the right, or somewhere in the middle in this curve. Make no mistake, so the bars here are all at the same level. So it's not like we have the low performer over here and the high performer over here. People just need different conditions in order to reach peak performance. I have a discovery to share with you today that I haven't shared with the public yet because it's going to be in my new book. I have analyzed the data of 30,000 executives. And I found something that I call a neural gap. Most people at the top of organizations are sensation seekers. They love challenge, they love competition, they love change. And they create a work environment in the workplace culture that thrives on gallons of coffee and no sleep. And while they enjoy it and can handle it, the other people are quitting. The other neurosignatures are quitting. To make it very clear, the deep thinkers are quitting and they're taking their talent and skills with them. The mass resignation is no mystery at all when you understand neurosignature diversity. We need to create a workplace that works for all kinds of brains, not just one of them, where deep thinkers can focus and sensation seekers can go wild and explore. Silence and solitude and sex, drugs, and rock and roll. When we understand neurosignature diversity and expand our understanding of diversity to also include how different brains think, the future of work looks bright. Don't change the people, change the workplace. Thank you so much. Thank you, Frederike, for that very insightful uh, talk, especially for sharing that very new piece of data you've been working on. We really appreciate it. And we have received some questions uh, from the audience. Uh, I think this one is, is, is a very good one. H how do I know? How do we, each one of us, know what is our neuro signature? Where do we fit on the spectrum? Uh, are there ways to, to, to test this or figure this out early on? Yeah, I mean, of course, we could take blood and urine samples from everyone, but I think we don't want that. We could go and put people into the brain scanner. That's very expensive. There are personality tests that are um, science-based that can measure your neurosignature. That's where I got my data from. But I think for everyday purposes, you just have to observe other people. There are certain traits associated with certain neurosignatures, and you can just ask yourself questions. For example, are you very curious? Do you always need to explore new things? Do you love to take risks? You know, are you very fast paced in your thinking? Then it's very likely that you're a sensation seeker. If you love rules, if you love regulations, if you're very loyal, if you're very detail oriented, you might have a more active serotonin signature. So it all comes down to a mix of serotonin, dopamine, testosterone, estrogen. And yes, we can measure it in the brain scanner. We can measure it with blood samples or saliva and all of that. But in reality, I think you just have to develop your skills of observing yourself and other people. Thank you. Perhaps we could come up with a neural gap app. That, that, that is a good ring to that. Perhaps that could, that could also help us, and I'm sure there will be tools more in the future based on these terrific insights. Frederike, thank you so much.